Hello, in today's lesson we are looking at Chapter 2, Section 4, Reasoning with Properties from Algebra. Our objectives are to use properties from algebra and use properties of length and measure to justify segment and angle relationships. We start with some algebraic properties of equality. Let A, B, and C be real numbers. In the addition property, if A is equal to B, then whatever I add to A, I also have to add to B in order to balance out this equation. So we have A plus C is equal to B plus C. In the subtraction property, if A is equal to B, then whatever I subtract from A, I also need to subtract from B in order to balance out the equation. So I have A minus C is equal to B minus C. Multiplication property, if A is equal to B, then AC is equal to BC, so whatever I multiply to A, I need to multiply to B as well in order to balance out the equation. Division property, if A is equal to B and C is not equal to zero, then whatever I divide A by, I need to divide B by, so A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. Reflexive property, for any real number, A, A is equal to A. So say for example, I have two triangles that share a common side. So this red triangle has this side in common. This blue triangle also has this side in common. We can say that this green line is reflexive to both the red triangle and the blue triangle because they share the same side. So when I say A is equal to A, I'm basically saying that some side is being shared by two figures. Symmetric property, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Think about it in terms of your multiplication facts. You can say that 5 times 4 is equal to 4 times 5 because it gives you the same product. 5 times 4 is 20 and 4 times 5 is 20, so it doesn't matter which way it's written, it still gives you 20. And so the symmetric property is just that you're just switching the places. Transitive property, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. The way I look at the transitive property is it's trying to get rid of the middleman. Since B is in both the equation A equals B and B equals C, and if I write it this way you can see it a little better, A equals B and B equals C, notice how B is in both equations so I can get rid of this middleman and just say that A is equal to C. Substitution property, if A is equal to B, then A can be substituted for B in any equation or expression. Example number one, writing reasons. Solve negative 2x plus 1 is equal to 56 minus 3x and write a reason for each step. So we're going to solve the equation and we're always going to start with what we're given. Our given for this case is our original equation which is negative 2x plus 1 is equal to 56 minus 3x. Our first step is to get this 56 by itself so I'm going to add 3x on both sides and when I add 3x on both sides what I'm doing is the addition property of equality. Negative 2x plus 3x is just 1x and 1 times x is just x. So I've got x plus 1 is equal to 56 and so negative 3x plus the 3x equals 0 and that goes away. Our next step from here is to isolate our x by subtracting 1 on both sides and this is the subtraction property of equality. 56 minus 1 is 55 so x equals 55. All right, checkpoint problem number one. Solve the equation and write a reason for each step. Using properties in real life. Signs. The Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature scales are related by the formula F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32, where F represents degrees Fahrenheit and C represents degrees Celsius. A. Solve the formula for C and write a reason for each step. B. Use the results to find the Celsius temperature that corresponds to the following Fahrenheit temperatures 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. How does the Celsius temperature change as the Fahrenheit temperature changes? This is a very useful equation because many countries do not use Fahrenheit to measure temperature. They actually use Celsius. So it's important to know how you can go between Fahrenheit and Celsius and use both of those equations. 
So we start off by trying to isolate c of our original equation of f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. So the first step is to subtract 32 on both sides because I want to get this 9 fifths c by itself. So I get f minus 32 is equal to 9 fifths c and that's using the subtraction property of equality. The next step to isolate c is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 9 fifths which is 5 over 9 so that I can isolate the Celsius. 9 times 5 is 45 divided by 5 times 9 which is 45. 45 divided by 45 is 1. Those go away. I'm left with C. And then on the left hand side my equation is 5 ninths times the quantity Fahrenheit minus 32 which is equal to the Celsius. And that's using the multiplication property of equality. Once we rewrite the equation in terms of Celsius, then we can substitute the 5 degrees Fahrenheit for the Fahrenheit part of our equation and simplify the equation to find the equivalent Celsius degree. We'll start by looking at the 5 degree Fahrenheit. Where F is, I'm just going to replace that with 5. And then order of operation says first do 5 minus 32, which is negative 27. And then multiply negative 27 by 5 ninths. 5 times negative 27 is negative 135. 9 times 1 is 9. Negative 135 divided by 9 is negative 15 degrees. And so our Celsius conversion for 5 degrees Fahrenheit is negative 15 degrees Celsius. We can find the remainder of the Fahrenheit conversions by plugging it in to this equation and following the same procedure. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit, when I plug it in to this equation and simplify it, gives me 0 degrees Celsius. 95 degrees Fahrenheit, when I plug it into this equation and simplify it, gives me 35 degrees Celsius. 140 degrees Fahrenheit, when I plug it into this equation and simplify, gives me 60 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit when I plug it into this equation and simplify gives me a hundred degrees Celsius. From the table you can see that the Celsius temperature increases as the Fahrenheit temperature increases. Properties of equality in reference to segments and in reference to angles. Our first one is the reflexive property of equality, which says for any statement AB, AB is equal to AB. That goes back to that triangle where if they're sharing a side, that line segment is the same measure for each triangle. Angle measure. For an angle A, the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle A. So if a shape is sharing the same angle measure, then the angle measure is the same for both shapes. Symmetric. If AB is equal to CD, then you can say that CD is equal to AB. You can just switch places. And if the measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle B, then the measure of angle B is equal to measure of angle A. Transitive. If AB is equal to CD and CD is equal to EF, then you can get rid of the middle guy, which is CD, and just say AB is equal to EF. And if the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B and the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle C, then again, you can get rid of the middle guy, which is the measure of angle B and just say that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle C. Example 3, using properties of measures. Use the information at the right to find the measure of angle 1. We are given that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to 360 degrees. That's my first statement because that's what I'm given. I'm also given that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So that's another given. And then I'm also given that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. And that's my other given. So I'm given three statements. From the statements that I'm given, I'm going to use that to solve for the measure of angle 1 and justify all of my steps. First, the measure of angle 4, I'm just going to leave as the measure of angle 4. I know that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 according to the second statement is equal to the measure of angle 4. So I can use substitution and instead of writing the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3, I'm just going to substitute the measure of angle 4 because I know those two are equal according to the second statement here. I also know that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4 and that's another one that I'm given 
And so again, I can use substitution and instead of writing the measure of angle one, I can say that this is the measure of angle four since they're equal. Now I have three measures of angle four. So the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle four. Since I had three of those, that's three times the measure of angle four. And that's equal to 360. I'm just simplifying. Isolate the measure of angle four by dividing both sides by three. So I'm using the division property of equality. Three divided by three is one. I'm just left with the measure of angle four on the left hand side. 360 divided by three is 120. So the measure of angle four is 120 degrees. But I'm not looking for the measure of angle four. I'm looking for the measure of angle one. And I know that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle four. The measure of angle four is 120 degrees. So then the measure of angle one has to be 120 degrees as well. And that's using the transitive property of equality. All right, checkpoint problem number two is yours in the diagram. At the right, B is the midpoint of line segment AC. So B over here is the midpoint of this line segment A to C. And C is the midpoint of the line segment BD. So C is the middle of this line segment BD. Show that AB is equal to CD. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.